Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on just a bunch of different DC news over the past week or so, roughly. Now, there's been a couple of different big things and then some like rumored stuff, which we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit of a plethora. It goes over a couple of different uh, upcoming DC projects, whether it's on the film side or on the TV side. But of course, throughout the video, if you're going to enjoy the video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like and it show your support. It takes two seconds. And of course, if you want to leave your opinions in the comment section down below in regards to any of the topics we go over, feel free to do that. Always uh, looking forward to reading what people have to say. So the first thing to go over is probably the big thing over the past week. The big thing, though it's also not a confirmed thing at the same time, and that's about Supergirl. Now, not specifically the movie Supergirl, because the casting could be for most likely Superman Legacy, though it could be for something else, but it makes sense if you're going to cast Supergirl for another movie before the Supergirl movie, that it's Superman Legacy. Now, essentially, it was one of those things very similar to the Superman thing and very similar to the Lois Lane thing where we have the, like the, the, the last group, if you want to call it, or a group of people who are going in to test or screen test uh, for the role of what I'd assume is, you know, obviously Kara Zor-El, aka Supergirl. And the rumor that's going around is that James Gunn's going to be the one casting the character because the character's first going to appear in the movie of Superman Legacy. Now, I'm fine with this. I've seen people, like, sort of, like, go on about, like, oh, maybe should be the person who's going to direct Supergirl, which, if that was the first appearance, then I'd probably agree with that. But if the first appearance is going to be in Superman Legacy, then I think it probably just works out that James Gunn does the casting and then you can sort of attach the director after you've found your Supergirl. Especially if, like, you know, Supergirl's going to be a, a major player in his universe, then maybe it should make sense that he would be the one that casts the character. And I'd assume that's probably going to be the same case with characters like Batman and, and Wonder Woman, that James Gunn will be, maybe not the person to make the final decision, but be a major player in that casting process. And then if a director is attached, like in the case of Andy Muschietti with Batman Brave and the Bold, then Andy Muschietti maybe gets the final say, but James Gunn has a lot of influence on those decisions. But with Supergirl, it seems like he will be the, de the decider, if that makes sense. Now, three names have been thrown to the mix, though. They're not the only three names. There are other people out there. Just these are the three that I guess, I think it was, I don't know who it was. I think it was Hollywood Reporter was the one that did it. It was one of them. But then all of them reported on it the same, uh, like afterwards anyway. But it's Amelia Jones, who was in CODA, and she was in... Uh, Netflix show, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but she was in Coda. Obviously, she was like the, the main character of Coda and that won Best Picture uh, at the Oscars l last year. Was it last year? I think, it, no, it was the year before. Year before last year, I think. I can't remember. I think it might have been last year, but that was a good movie. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be some people's cup of tea, but it was a good movie. The other one is, or the, the second one is Millie Alcock, who is well known for House of the Dragon. She's an Australian actress. So I've seen her in some of the other stuff that's like some Australian shows and stuff. There's a show called Upright, which has two seasons. I don't know if it's available anywhere else, probably in, in England or the, in Britain. It'd be available on some of the streaming services because Australia and Britain seem to share their, uh, sh share their shows fairly consistently. I'm not too sure about Americans, but Millie Alcock, most people would know from House of the Dragon. She's my favorite pick. There's a bit of bias there because the Australian thing but also i just think she's probably the best actress or out of all these at least the one that fits supergirl i think in regards to what they'd want there so i think she's the topic and the third one that was mentioned is meg donnelly who a lot of people probably wouldn't even really know but she's actually already got a supergirl connection because she voices supergirl in the current animated universe or the tomorrowverse she just voiced her in the crisis movie or the part one of crisis and I'm, you know going to be in other parts obviously as well now I was, I was like she looks familiar and then i figured out that she was the female lead in that winchester show which was like the supernatural spinoff which was cancelled after one season and that's why she, her face looked familiar so there's i guess there's a, like a warner brothers connection there already and then of course the supergirl connection as well so a lot of people think that she might be the top choice i actually think the fact that she's already voiced supergirl in a universe that's about to be wiped out probably mean she doesn't really have that good of a chance and also i just think maybe the other two have better credibility around them in the case of amelia jones and millie orcock as well so i think meg donnelly out of these three is probably the lower choice not in regards to like you know ability and stuff like that but in regards to likelihood so yeah so my choice is millie orcock but i'd be pretty happy if it was amelia jones as well just because i think she's a pretty damn good actress as well but as I said, these are three names that are just being said. They're not the only three names. There could be others out there. Um, we just don't know at that point. 
But one actress that's been thrown into the mix, like, okay, is this one of the other people that's not being mentioned, is Catherine Newton. And you might recognize her as, you know, Cassie Lang in Ant-Man, or the most recent Ant-Man movie, because it was that recast. And then she's in a bunch of other stuff as well. She's in, like, that Pokemon movie and stuff like that. She's in a bunch of stuff. Catherine Newton. She's been followed by Rachel Brosnahan and James Gunn and Skylar Gazonda, who's playing Jimmy Olsen. So Rachel Brosnahan, of course, is playing Lois Lane. James Gunn's the goddamn writer, director, and architect of the dc universe and scarlett gazonda is playing jimmy olsen now i think james gunn was already following her previously i don't think this is a new follow from memory from what is being put out there but rachel brosnahan and scarlett gazonda have only just recently followed her so a lot of people think oh she's supergirl because she's got blonde hair i don't think this is the case and the main reason i say that is because she's cassie lang as i said and they have plans to use that character as a main thing in the mcu going forward at least they do in they did have plans. I don't know if they're going to change, but she's going to be in the new Avengers and stuff. And I'm sure she signed a contract for that and everything like that because that was her first movie in Ant-Man uh, Quantumania. So I don't think she's playing Supergirl, but why would Rachel Brosnahan, Skylar Gazondo, and even James Gunn be following her? I think she might be in Superman Legacy, but as a smaller character. And I think she actually suits the character so well. I think she suits the character far more than Supergirl. And that is the character of Cat Grant. It makes sense you'd have Cat Grant at the Daily Planet and being like that snarky, maybe a bit of a competitor, but also still a bit of a friend to Lois Lane. I think she fits that perfectly, especially if she's like the young, the more younger reporter. Maybe she's in like the gossip thing, especially if it's set, you know, in the present day and the social media and stuff. She fits Cat Grant so well. Not fun. No, it's not even funny. Like she looks like Cat Grant as well. It just seems like the obvious choice. If she's in Superman Legacy and these follows mean that she's like going to be in the movie, Cat Grant is the obvious choice. Now I don't know if people are saying this. When the the initial follow stuff was coming out, everyone was just saying, "Oh, Supergirl, Supergirl." But I'm sitting there going, like, it's just Cat Grant. Like that just seems like the obvious one. It doesn't mean she is going to be Cat Grant, but the, to me that just seems like the obvious choice. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she is going to be Supergirl. But when I think of uh, what's her name? Yeah, Catherine Newton. I was going to say something else. Uh, Catherine Newton, I think Cat Grant in relation to Superman Legacy. So watch this space, I guess, but that's my prediction. So hopefully I'm correct. But because of this news coming out, there was like a lot of things going to James Gunn, as you would expect, because it's a big casting of Supergirl, of course, and there's also potentially another casting for Superman Legacy uh, with like, you know, those three actresses I mentioned before mentioned in the article. And James Gunn sort of acknowledged the piece but also was like well i'm not going to address it at the same time and he pretty much said like he's not going to deny rumors due to there being some truth within within them so he also doesn't want to say oh it's all fake and then some of it's true and then he gets slated which he has already in the in like in the past and, and recent memory as well for being a liar like a lot of people just say that james gunn's a liar he has double standards or he keeps walking back on promises or you know whatever it might be and i think he's he, he probably should just not have said anything because like he pretty much confirmed that there is some truth there now is the truth that you know supergirl is going to be in superman legacy or is the truth that some of these actresses are up for it like what's the truth there so then it creates another level of speculation around it now there's been and i've talked about this before in some other videos about james gunn's social media presence now i feel he probably should be offered like you don't i think him being on it is probably not good for him because he's I, I, james gunn probably wakes up and either has two things on he, in his notifications or whatever you call it like the messages and stuff on whatever social media service it is it's probably people kissing his ass or it's people wanting to tear his ass apart and there's probably no middle ground it's either people up his ass or people kissing uh people up his ass or kissing his ass whichever way you want to put it like sucking up to him going james i love you you're the best or it's people calling his wife a slag or whatever it is like it's it's it's, it's pretty much those two things there's no middle ground why would you come on social media for that like I, I think he's going it's going to get to the point where he's not going to interact much i think he's interacting in the moment because he's probably just waiting for superman legacy like he's done a lot of the prep work already the script's done a lot of the thing now is like the like the actual departments getting sets ready and stuff which he would just get updates for he doesn't really have to do too much now up until like that few weeks to a month before they start filming like he's probably just in chill mode until that starts so i don't expect him to interact too much on social media once that starts rolling along which is probably good because then you get things like this he's also giving us some responses which he's walked back on because i don't think he really understood the question or at the time the circumstances were different so i think 
he will go a bit radio silent, at least in regards to interaction. I think he'll still post on social media like, day one of Superman Legacy, look at this photo of a car or whatever it is. Um, but no interaction. I think that's for the best. I know people like the interaction because it feels like maybe you're involved in the making of the DC universe, which isn't the case. But I think it's just, it, it gets a bit crazy. Uh, I think it's getting crazier and crazier by the day. And James Gunn doesn't need to be buddy buddy with us viewers. Like, you know, whether one buying a ticket, you're not buying it because James Gunn wrote it, you're buying it because, oh God, this could be a really cool Superman movie and that's it. So I don't know if there needs to be this buddy buddy thing. Um, and I think James Gunn might be slowly realizing that, but we'll, we'll wait and see what happens over the next whatever period is, because it's getting a bit, uh, it's getting toxic, like on both sides and stuff like that. So, uh, as a person on the outside, I'm happy that I don't participate in it for the most part. Now, James Gunn also did say one more thing, and there's been this curious factor or like a factor of curiosity, if you want to put it ever since he took over about one specific thing in this DCU. So we know we're getting animated shows. We know we're getting TV shows. We know we're getting movies, maybe animated movies, whatever it is. But one thing that was also mentioned was the video games thing and people wondering how that was going to work because we've sort of passed that era of like the 2000s and early 2010s with the movie tie-in games where like, like Marvel did a lot where like they, I think for like that entire first thing before the Avengers, like each or most of the ga movies had a game attached to it. So like Thor had a game, Captain America game, uh, Captain America had a game, I think Iron Man had two games. I don't think Hulk had a game from memory. Um, but you know, and they were just movie tying games. It took you like four or five hours to complete. Some of the stuff in the, in the game was from the movie and some of the stuff was like set in between scenes or before or after the movie, whatever it is. And they were fun, but they've also like, it's a sort of, you know, it, We've, we're past that era. So people were wondering, okay, are the games going to be like that? And he said, no, they're not movie tie-in games. They are triple A games, which means they are just straight up full on games like a Batman Arkham Knight or like a Spider-Man or Wolverine or, you know, whatever it is, but just set within the DCU, uh, the, like the, the DC universe for the movies and the TV shows. And I am excited by that because it makes me think, okay, at least the quality is going to be much higher. And he has said they've started working on them, at least it probably means in regards to like the actual ideas in them. Though there was like job advertisements that came up like two or three weeks ago that people found where it's um it seems to be clearly be for this universe, like these games in these universe that they want developers for. So I'm excited to see what comes about it. I hope that they are, it's not like it, like they are proper triple A games and stuff like that. But I'm also intrigued to see like if they, like do you get an extra, like a, a more deep experience for this DCU by playing them or are they just like set within there and the movies and TV shows don't really acknowledge them. I think it makes sense that they wouldn't be acknowledged too much, but just like, I'd like it if like, you know, let's say it's, let's say it's, 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 just, it's Superman appears in the game. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Superman game, but Superman appears and David Corrin sweat voices the character. And maybe it has like some motion capture and stuff uh, for the character in the game. Like that'd be really, really cool. And like, that'd be something you don't really see too much. So that would be a really cool aspect if they go down that route, but it's also a way and see. I think we've all, especially if you, if you do play a uh, game or video game, video games, a very technical term. If you are a gamer, and you've played like, you know, somewhat consistently, I think you've known either about a game being announced and it doesn't come out or it gets overhyped and you get it and it's just not very good. Like, so I'm not going to get too excited about it because it is like a weird concept, like these AAA games, but they're intertwined with the movie and TV universes as well. So I'd rather wait and see it uh, and what happens there. And also games take ages to develop as well. So that's why I don't, you wouldn't, it was always going to be surprising if they were movie tie in or they played a major part in the story just because you don't know when it's going to be released, if there's delays and stuff. So I'm intrigued to see what they are and what, you know, possible games they are. I'd assume maybe at Comic Con we might find out at least one of the games in development. Um, but I don't know what they, they'd probably not do a Batman one. They could do a Superman one. People have wanted one. People want a Flash one. We know there's a Wonder Woman game coming out, but that's not connected to this. So, but then again, maybe they might change it and it is connected. I don't know. And the final thing to go over in this video is actually some stuff about the Amanda Waller show. Now these are rumored details. These are coming from the DCU leaks Reddit. Uh, so I thought we'd go over them, just take them with a grain of salt and just, you know, don't treat them as if they're confirmed, but it's still a bit of a interesting uh, exercise if you want to put it. So we'll go over them right now and give our thoughts. So I've got a lot, sorry if I look down, but I've got my phone, I've got like the, the screenshot on my phone. So sorry if I'm looking down, but it's the best way to do it. So what's being rumored is that the Waller show or the Amanda Waller show will comprise of 13 episodes, which is 
a lot more than I thought it would be. That honestly, I don't really like reading the first thing, and it makes me a bit sus of it. Uh, I think like a Waller show, I think would be like eight episodes at max, but uh, I guess thirteen episodes. We'll go with it. Uh, most of the scripts have been written, and they have actually started casting. Well, we know that um, like obviously Amanda Waller is going to be in it, and that the some of the Peacemaker cast is going to recur in it. I don't know if they're going to be main characters, but they're going to recur in it at the very least. Uh, Phil Abraham is set to direct the f first two episodes. Not too familiar with him. Freddie Stromer will reprise his role as Vigilante, which ties into what I was saying with the Peacemaker cast. So I'd assume that Economos and uh, Harcourt and maybe some, uh, some of the other characters uh, appear in there as well. Uh, Sean Gunn will play Maxwell Lord in this series. So of course, Sean Gunn was cast as Maxwell Lord, but it was said like it wasn't cast for a specific project, just that he will be Maxwell Lord in the DCU. So I guess it makes sort of sense that he would appear in this series and this would be the entry point. I don't know how big of a character he's going to be in larger movies. So maybe he might be more of a, like a recurring threat throughout the TV stuff. Um, but this sort of fits that he would appear in Waller, but also we still take it with a grain of salt. And the uh, second last thing was Sean, uh, John Douglas Thompson and Ivana S uh, Sakno have been cast in supporting roles. Once again, probably just Argus agents, I guess. Um, and the season will be split into two. The first half will premiere sometime in the spring of 2025, while the second half will premiere in the fall. That makes me think Cap, that last thing, I don't think that would do that. I think that rather momentum, unless it serves for a movie coming out. So that's the only thing that I could think of. If it serves something else. So let's say this came out and then Peacemaker season two came out and then you got the back half of this, then that would make sense. If there's nothing in between that warrants the break, then I don't think they would do that. They would just release all you know, just have 13 weeks or maybe they release the first two or three episodes and week to week after that. I mean, it worked with, it works with most shows, um, especially if you've got an interesting enough storyline. So I don't see that happening at the very least. I don't see that happening. Maybe that's just me, but that just sounds like a bit of cap that splitting into two. And how would they know? Like that's usually a thing once you start making the show that you make that decision that far out. Yeah, I don't know. That last thing actually makes me think that's complete ass. The first one with 13 episodes made me go, hmm, it's a bit too much. That last one now makes me go, ass. That's a load of baloney, if you want to put it. So, yeah. I learned an interesting exercise, so sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes you just get angry at it. So I'm a bit angry at it. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could drop a like and a show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions about all the stuff we went over in this video. Always curious to read what you guys are thinking. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.